Hello everyone, welcome to a prof- another Professionally Unprofessional um, podcast. I'm joined by my good friends Reese in the Middle, who's playing Mortal Kombat 1. Hello everyone. And my friend Elliot, who's just finished his review of Sea of Stars. Are you happy we're back? No? Me neither, man. Yeah, no, I... I... This, is, this is awful, we need to stop this. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so, we oh, originally... Father. We originally planned to be only coming back for one uh, subject matter, but then another subject matter came on our line, so we're going to do both in one. So it's we're talking about both the um, state of play and the Nintendo Direct that happened pri- uh, the day prior to us recording this. So this this is about the September fourteenth edition of both of those. Um, how did you? So I'll, we'll start with the Nintendo Direct. How did you guys feel going into this Direct? Think with um, the timeline of the Switch's life now. I well, can't. Uh, I can't suppose it'd just be like another standard Direct, really. Uh, mm. Reese. Yeah, same. Because they they only announced it was going to be for upcoming games they're releasing in the winter. So I wasn't expecting like Switch Two news. No, 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 no. That's um. I feel like they would do their own thing for that. I think they would dedicate yeah. an entire direct to it, um, like what PlayStation did with the PS Five. Um, I have a thought about what they did with the Switch actually. Uh, do you mind if I ask Elliot? Uh, considering yeah. you don't like leaks, did you hear about what Nintendo? Uh, uh, well, I should say Nvidia did on behalf of Nintendo, uh, behind closed doors at Gamescom. Then they, yeah, they had like a demo for it, right? Yes, they had a demo for it, and uh, I listened to uh, Nate the Hates podcast on this one, um, and he could provide a bit of information about that. How did you feel? How do you feel about the idea of? So the Switch Two is obviously down the lo- obviously down the line. So that's something that was obvious. But so this was re- this really did feels like a bit of an end of an era because this is the last direct where it's only going to be the Switch that we're going to be thinking about. Mm, yeah, maybe. I mean, you don't. You never know. They might do one more in February before they decide to announce a new console. No, no, no. What I mean is, it's yes. I believe they will do another direct before they announce the console. But I, this is the last time where we can look at all the games in it and say, yeah, those are only the Switch. None of these are going to be cross-gen. Um, mm. So on that basis, and the fact that. Um, Reese's dog that's appeared in shot is is seen is tr- wants us to get on with it. Let's talk about the first thing. Um, we have the news on split. Direct open with the trailer for the Splatoon three DLC. Uh, comes out in uh, and the it looks all right. It has a bit of a rogue like aspect to it, and it's coming in. And this one surprised me. It's coming spring twenty twenty four. Why announce this now? That's what I don't get. So it's like what? you were saying, Elliot. What do you mean? Why announce this now? I don't get why you couldn't have saved this till um, the, uh, the 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 direct in in the, say there's a direct in February. Why didn't you save it for that one? It's way closer. That's, to the release uh, date. I mean, that's I mean, let's be honest. It's always like saying, why did you? show off the Super Mario RPG trailer now. You could have done it in the next Direct two months before that it came out. I think, though, it's the thing for me, though, is with the Splatoon 3 one, if they go, are going to show... It felt like that... Really, especially considering that that DLC's now been delayed. It was meant to come out the end of this year. It's now going to come out spring 2024. I mean, maybe that's partly why, just to say, oh, it's coming out now instead. I mean, there's obviously an announcement. What do you think of the idea of a Splatoon roguelike, though? Um, it's an interesting idea. I don't really know how it would work, though, because Splatoon's... Because Splatoon really isn't, like, that focused on, like, getting str- getting stronger equipment. Like, all the equipment you get at the beginning of the game can be easily done, can be used, like, pretty far in the game. As example, like, as example, I still use the same... Uh, the same dual pistols I first got. Yeah, uh, yeah and I, I I use um the one that's a rep- at the minute I use mostly the one the one that's a replica of the um the Nintendo the NES uh, light gun. Mm. That the Zapper. One, yeah, that that one because I use the Zapper replica because that one really suits my play style. 
I thought you used a pain roller. I I'd stop, I I at the beginning of the game because that what they hadn't put it back in and that was my my main in Splatoon two, and I hadn't put it back in so I started getting work with the roller at that point. But the problem with the roller is it's great for um, painting the map, but I'm terrible at killing enemies with it. So I mean, scare issue. <laughs> Split. Oh, funny. Um. So, incidentally, incidentally, can I be on a winning team on Splatoon 3 Splatfest already? I've not no. been on one winning team since the Splatfest started. No, fuck you. Fuck you, you lose all the time. I lost in the last one as well. I was on team... And somehow I win all the time. Uh, what team were you on in the last Splatfest? I forgot about the last Splatfest. I didn't join in, but I would have been on Sheba's team. You would have won. Yeah. I was on team Big Man. Because I knew, knew Sheba was going on the winning streak. I thought, fuck it, let's keep going. I was on Team Big Man, and we lost because of you guys. I didn't play. It's not my fault. Oh, dear. Big Man will have his day. Um, so, I mean, are you excited for the Splatoon DLC? I know you're you're not particularly interested in Splatoon, Reese, but um, you, Elliot, how do you feel about Splatoon 3 um, DLC? It looks interesting, but as I said, keep saying, I'm more interested in the multiplayer stuff with Splatoon. I've never really been that into the single-player stuff. Yeah, it's funny because I praised single player when it came out, but I I'm now thinking I can, apart from the final battle, I can barely remember ho and what happened in that one. The boss battles in those are pretty good, but that's all I can remember about it. I mean, I yeah, I would have preferred, honestly, now I wouldn't say I prefer the single player games if they were a boss rush, but yeah, I just wasn't that, I'm, I like the single player, just not as, a, as into it, I just prefer the multiplayer stuff. Well, I've already paid for this DLC, so I might as well check it out when it comes out. Doesn't uh, it come with the... Uh, I could be wrong. Does it come with the uh, NSO expansion pack? Uh, no, that's the Splatoon 2 Octo... Um, ah, yeah, it's the second one. The, sec bad. the second game's DLC comes with the expansion pass. Um, so, next announcement was a remake of the Game Boy Advance game, Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Which, i just like to know, I find hilarious... So many people were saying that because apparently we were going to be get people were saying we're going to be getting a new Donkey Kong game, and a bunch of people on Twitter were joking, "Oh, what well, if it's a new Mario versus Donkey Kong game?" No, there was a there was a. I, I actually... <laughs> <laughs> now the good thing is they're remaking the really good Mario versus Donkey Kong game. They're not remaking the mediocre ones that were on Wii U. Yeah, I I, I didn't even know it was a remake originally. Yeah. Um, I incidentally I did buy the Wii U one because it had a lot of amiibo functionality. Yeah, I, um, a lot of people were saying like they kind of hope they bring back like the shit cutscenes that happen, like with the toad suit in it and going twenty dollars. <laughs> I love. Uh, um, I hope back. That would just be fucked. You guys are so both funny. You both played a lot of GBA. Do you guys? Did yeah. you guys actually have original Mario versus Donkey Kong? No, I, I I did, yeah. So you must be yeah, really happy with this remake. I played, I have I had a GBA. I played a lot of it, but I didn't play the right games. Yes. If you need a, a hint as to what I mean, I think the game I put the most runtime in was either the first Lego Star Wars or Scooby Doo Two: Monsters Unleashed. So, um, uh, did you get the code from the um the movie at the end, the post credit no. scene? No. Damn it. Um, I think I even beat it. Reese, what do you think of this remake? Uh, it certainly looks good. It's got a lot of polish going into it. But the, I, 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 this, this actually does a, a thing that I think a lot of the Nintendo first-party titles that were in this sort of fill. They are filler titles. Yeah. Like this feels like filler to get to the next console. Yeah, because no, no one was begging Nintendo to remake this game. Yeah, and this is not the Donkey Kong project that um, most of the leakers of, like last year were talking about. This is a different project. So, I mean, presumably Donkey Kong's coming going to be back on the um, what on, on the next console. They're gonna they want to do a Donkey Kong game, but I think Tropical Freeze is the most we're getting for a traditional Donkey Kong on the Switch. Yeah, can't wait to get Donkey Kong. Get to get Donkey Kong Tropical Th Freeze, the re 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 remake with new all brand new Dixie mode. She was already in the main game. Yeah, she's coming back. So 
Here's the thing. I wish she was uh, in other games because uh, we'll get to that later. But another one we're going to get to later. I would love it if they did Donkey Kong Country 99. You know, similar to yeah, Mario 35. That, that, that would be very hectic. Oh, that, that's why you want it. Nah, I think with Donkey Kong, I kind of want another 3D game. So you like Donkey Kong 64? I kind of want another one. I wouldn't want Donkey Kong 64 remade because obviously clunky and bloated. I like them to, to to give it another go, but like maybe shorten it a bit, like condense it a bit more. And don't go nuts with the collectibles because that's yeah. the worst part of DK64. Yeah, have like, oh, more nervy. You can still have the collectibles, just don't make them link to specific characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, I mean, Donkey Kong, Mario vs. Donkey Kong is out February 16th. I think it'll be worth a shot, but I think there's going to be a lot of people play it first weekend, then they'll put it away and not really take much from it. No, they'll, yeah. prob they'll probably go, go like, play, for, play five levels and be like, yeah, that's it. So, uh, next game was uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, still coming out January 18th. Put a lot of um, new information in it. Every time I see that Prince of Persia game, I kind of think, this looks pretty good, but something feels off. Yeah, it looks all right, actually. What? Yeah, it just doesn't look like a Prince of Persia game. That's that, like that, we used to. I mean, I mean, it's a side-scroller, so... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the original Prince of Persia game, and I mean the really original Prince of Persia game, was a side-scroller, so... Mm. I still question whether this was meant to come out... Before, after the Sands of Time remake, it was well, meant. It was definitely meant to come out after the Sands of Time remake. The Sands of Time remake should yeah. have been out by now, and I don't know what's happened with that. Ubisoft doesn't even want to talk about that. I mean, people are thinking they probably just shadow cancelled it. Well, it was passed between Ubisoft India back to Montreal, so they've had to pretty much restart it. Uh, I, I don't think they're restarting it. I think they are just shifting studios. So I think they got like they are working on the source code that those guys had, but yeah, I I don't. I, I don't know what's I, I don't know how I feel about this Prince of Persia game. I feel like I'm probably this probably would be a definite pickup for me. If... I mean, I mean, from the looks of it, um, it basically just looks like uh, Prince of Persia Dread, kind of. Just please don't make me log into a UPlay account to play the single player on this one. Um, I wonder. I wonder though. We don't know like. I don't know if it's like it's just a normal side school, if it's like a Metroidvania or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. definitely conveyed that very well. Which is, um, if it's a Metroidvania, I'll definitely give it a go because I love those kind of games. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll be waiting for the Jake Gyllenhaal skin DLC to drop first. <laughs> oh my God, you're one of the only people who remembers that movie. Um, uh, no, I I remember it. Actually, I still think that film's okay. The um, next game, uh, if you didn't, if you, uh, uh, by the way, if you weren't bringing out Prince of Persia, it's out July, January 18th. Uh, a yeah. game that came out after the Direct, I haven't played it yet, um, Horizon Chase 2. It looks like they tried to cash in a bit on that. Um... This is literally a mobile game. Yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it to bash on it. It's literally a mobile game. I looked it up. It is a mobile game. It looks that you can get on Apple. It looks quite good. I mean, it looks a bit. It reminds me a lot of um, Cruising nah, Blast. Nah, this looks like this looks like Asphalt Light. Yeah, but mm. we said that about Cruising Blast, and I actually bought that, and it was amazing. Uh, but again, it doesn't look like it has the novelty value that something like a Cruising Blast would have. Yeah, but the whole stage revolves around the drivers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like like in Cruising Blast, you could eventually unlock a knight riding a unicorn as one of the racers. I mean, that you're not going to get something that insane in this one. Uh, it looks like it. I'm looking at the footage. It looks like the frame rate fluctuates a fair bit. Yeah, especially when it goes like four player. Yeah, especially in multiplayer. I was about to say that. Yeah. Um, next game was a game from Konami, Super Crazy Rhythm Castle. Comes out November fourteenth. I do not remember. I. I do not remember this one because I was looking because I was looking looking up a fucking Horizon Chase two to see if it was a phone game. But um, yeah, no. So super, uh, it, it looks like this weird rhythm game that's coming out, and I'm not sure if I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy this one 
Um, but uh, it will depend. If the song list has some famous Konami songs in there, I might pick it up for that alone. Like if it's got some Castlevania songs in there, that's an instant pickup for me. Well, that would require uh, Konami to go through effort, though, for their back catalogue. Yeah, but... They're, they're just going to do the whole Wii, Wii Music thing, oh, minus the few Nintendo songs they had in that. Oh, don't get me started on the whole Wii Music thing. That's We're going to talk about that soon. Um, next up was a uh, game coming out in 2024, a sort of spy ex-family game with Anya as the character. So, instant game of the year. Yes, I we all. Uh, but I kind of like the idea. That I I can't quite tell what they're trying to do. Are they trying? Is this trying to be like Animal Crossing, Pokemon Snap? Yeah, I have no idea what this game is even meant to be. It's not showing any other things we love from the anime. I... Like, let's be honest. The thing, the thing I really like from the anime was just things that was just Anya input like randomly tagging along with Lloyd's missions i like seeing like all that stuff and like all the craziness that happens to that eh. you're presumably going to be using anya's telepathy in some fashion they didn't show oh. it in this they didn't show it in this trailer as far as i'm aware this could just be this could just be on the one week that I, one normal week that anya has or something like that but the other thing I found interesting is the fact that there's a lot of gameplay styles that they showed in this. And they showed, like, photography and life sim stuff. And there was a bit where the, uh, she's playing a card game with Damien. I'm like, what is the core of this game? That's what I want to know. It's yeah, it's very vague on it, which kind of makes you feel a bit iffy on it, honestly. All I can say is don't try to clone Animal Crossing in Harvest Moon because though y those games have nailed that down to a T. You do. It doesn't look like it's trying to do that. It's trying more just to be a sort of a life sim style in Anya. Like you're not trying to build up your own community. You're more just doing random stuff. It could easily be like a mini game thing. Um. Okay, so back to some Nintendo stuff. Um... Super Mario RP new information on Super Mario RPG. It's still out on it's still no delay. It's definitely coming out on November the 17th. They showed off a few of the new features of the cup. They gave you a sort of a recap of the gameplay style for people who haven't played the original. As yeah. well as showed off a few of the new features like the all out attacks, which change depending on your team makeup. And uh, you get rematches with all the bosses in the post game. Which looks to be absurdly difficult with the bosses hitting for nine 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 damage. Yes, that is um. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I legit. I, I legit saw that. I just. Rem... <laughs> someone's someone's been playing. Someone's been playing Elden Ring recently. So um, I mean, I'm really excited for Super Mario RPG. I wish it wasn't coming out the same day as Persona Five Tactica, but yeah, still very excited for it. This looks like they've put a lot of effort into sort of saying, well, Mario RPG, Super Mario RPG is not one of the longest RPGs in the world. Yeah. So let's give them a little more content to justify putting down, well, in America, $60 for this. For this. And what I found, and I do find it amazing that Nintendo's decided to do this, this overall, but... Um, Elliot, how do you feel about Super Mario RPG after this trailer? Looks fun. Uh, Reese? Yeah, it looks really good. I'm super impressed by the new uh, graphical engine they're using. Yeah, it, it does look like they put a lot of effort into this. So, so the cheapy characters do so a bit weird in the 3D models. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It, it is one of those where they're trying to, um, they're trying to replicate that style from the Super Nintendo game, but they might have gone a little too far with it. Um, yeah, they still have the whole meme of Mario wants uppies. <laughs> um, then, who would have thought Nintendo would bring this back? Um, another Code gets a dual pack coming in January the 19th uh, called Another Code Recollection. You get both the, a remake of the DS game and the Wii game that never left Japan. I had no idea this was going to be here. I don't even know what this is. Yeah, I never, I never heard anything about this. This one caught me completely off guard. It's this is a sort of DS Wii era 
Nintendo franchise. It's kind of a puzzle game with a puzzle slash narrative game. This yeah, uh, this is um, you have to God, you've got to be a hardcore Nintendo fan to remember this was a thing. Um, I mean, I'm really interested to buy this one, but I feel like I want to wait for a physical. I don't know if they are going to release this physically. I want to get a physical version because yeah. I'm a little concerned. Oh, I'm a little uh, concerned over just how much the next. I'm starting to get more physical versions of games from that I already own digitally because I want to make sure I have a backup in case the Switch Two has no backwards compatibility. Yeah, that's why I always buy physically these days. Why? Well, here's my question: If the Switch Two has no backwards compatibility, why would get the physical games changed up? Because it means that when the servers go down, I've still got a copy of the game. You can, you still have copies of the of the games. It's not like I've got I like the three DS shop and servers are going down. I'm not gonna lose the games like the digital games I got on that. Oh yeah, fair, no, yeah. but uh, but but if you if you delete them, you won't be able to re-download them. I don't think there will be eventually come a point where that will happen. So it's it's yeah. more preservation more than anything. It's just a bit. And most of the time, I'm buying them secondhand. I'm not buying them. Uh, just just admit it. You just want the boxes. You just want the pretty boxes to put on your to put on your shelf. To, you, you can bring over the family and say, "Look what I've got." I will neither deny nor confirm that fact. Um, then... As I keep as I keep saying, he's that. As I keep saying during the live streams, Calvin's the kind of person who will call everyone over what to show off his new Tekken costume. <laughs> you... Just everyone, come over, come over, come over. Kashi is green now. So, um, incidentally, the uh, we'll talk about my amiibo wall later. Um, uh, I'll put. Uh, um, so, I will say uh, the the this. I do think this looks like a decent update to these games. The another co. Another. Co I mean, if it, if if it was originally a DS game, this yeah, it's got a major glow up. So, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check this one out. I just don't know. Um, which I just don't know. Don't know if I, if they have a physical version, I'll definitely pick it up. If it's digital only, I'll pick that one up anyway. But I'll look for a physical version later. So um, next up is uh oh, actually I forgot to ask. Do, are you guys going to pick up another code? Don't know. Probably not. Okay, it's just me then. Um, I think I'm going to be the one to pick up this one as well. They showed a bit more of the new Princess Peach game. It's called Princess Peach Showtime. It's releasing March 22nd and involves Peach donning different costumes to um, save a bunch of plays in the show house. This is another issue, uh, another uh, example of Nintendo oversharing. You've they reveal way too much in this. In yeah, my I was opinion. watching that saying, "Stop, stop mm. showing stuff." I, I want to experience some of this stuff for myself. Stop yeah. like, showing stuff. Show a couple of the costumes. Don't just say what's happening in every fucking play. Like I was yeah. going, "Oh, cool!" So we got Sword Fighter Peach, we got Detective Peach, and it's like, "Okay, Kung Fu Peach," and then they shut off another one. Like, "No, stop, stop, stop!" <laughs> also, can I just say I'm sick of Nintendo calling people who use swords just sword fighters. Yeah. Give him like other names. Like I saw that, I thought, oh, Musketeer Peach. I agree that, with that one. That better name, bad, that better name. It. Where's my paycheck, Nintendo? But it, it, it does us a glimpse of the future Smash Bros. DLC for the next game. <laughs> That's just gonna be all Peach's extra yeah. costumes. Um... Either either that or either that or they will change one of the moves to like to like what Zelda has, like the whole transformation thing. Mm. Yeah, I could definitely. As of course, that's of course, if Nintendo ever bothers to update the fighters' move sets. Um. Yeah, that's just. I mean, I could. I actually could see, considering how much Nintendo's shifting focus would probably going to shift focus with the next. Um, Smash game. They might update some fighter, costume. They might update some fighter move sets. Uh, but. How do you guys think about Princess Peach? Do you think this is one you want to buy, or is it... Nah, this ain't doing it for me. It looks fine. Yeah, I may possibly pick it up. Turns out 
Reviews turn out on first impressions. Yeah, it's going to really... Um, it, it's it's going to be a bit of a make or break scenario for that one. For that one, I I will pick this one up. If nothing else, I'll take the review job if necessary. But as a whole, as a whole, I really like the look of this. I really like the look of this one. Um, next up, Saga Emerald Beyond comes out in two thousand four. It looks like a pretty typical Saga game, but I also got to wonder what budget did Square Enix give to this game. It does not look high. <laughs> I just, I just see this. I, I see some of the graphics on this, and I think, well, I'm happy that the guys from that that the guys from Foo Fight are still getting work. But oh my god, Saga always looked really good back in the day. Like you've seen some of those remasters of things like S Saga Frontier. They look great. What happened here? I don't even know what Saga looks like. I never even heard of this franchise. It's one you should check. Uh, you ch I would recommend checking out. Like uh, the Saga series is pretty good. Actually, it's one of Square Enix's underrated franchises. Um, uh, that's out sometime next year. They didn't specify. Uh, yeah. Next one. This was one of the highlights of the show for me, actually. Uh, Tomb Raider One to Three Remastered. Uh, remastered. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I really like the look of the this of this one. It does mobile game graphics. I'm getting yeah. like looking from it. I'm getting major GTA Definitive Edition vibes. That was going to be my point as well, Elliot. I, I'm, I'm the only person who's. Re I've already pre-ordered it. I will say. Well, of course. Because I, I really like the original. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at a lot of the stuff. I'm sorry. I'm looking. I'm looking at all this stuff. I feel like I'm watching RuneScape footage. Oh, God. I, I've just got to bit in the trailer with it. It's the T-Rex and the new graphics. It looks <laughs> so derpy. Oh, no. I'm, I've just gone past a bit with, like, the warrior with the two spears. Yeah. Just Again, a little bit it, looks the like from, it looks like they're from fucking RuneScape. I yeah. will say, the one thing that is worrying me about um, Tomb Raider 1 to 3 Remastered in terms of, like, the public reception is not... How it looks, because I think if if if, if, if there were the internet, if there was a lot of people that had a problem with the way um, Tomb Raider remastered looks, they would have said by now. Yeah. What um, they put up in, at the minute, I'm more worried that they're going to realise the controls in the PS One game weren't that good. Yeah, I hope that. Yeah, I hope they like I've just update the controls. I do. And considering the fact that people that they have, I was to say, you could toggle between the original PS One and the graphics on this. I think everyone's going to be playing the PS One graphics. No one's going to be playing with the new one. I'm yeah. going to probably toggle a bit back and forth, see how I feel about it. But look, for preservation purposes, I'm glad there's a more there's more a new way to properly access access Tomb Raider one to three. But yeah. Calvin, what about when the servers go down? And you won't be able to play it on your Nintendo Switch anymore. Well, here's the thing. If it goes to Steam, there's more preservation there altogether because hardly anything ever gets taken off Steam. And it hasn't been announced for that yet, as far as I'm aware. But if it hasn't been announced yet, get these ones on PlayStation 5 because Tomb I can't not associate Tomb Raider with... Especially those games without, with, without talking about PlayStation... Yeah, I mean, I mean, you say you say that they seem to, Microsoft seem to, it seem to be more Microsoft IPs now. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like there was a big time when uh, Microsoft were really caught in Square Enix to make Tomb Raider feel very Xbox. But I mean, they put they put it in like a lot of car, like a lot of the promotional stuff for the Xbox One. I st I stand by though I can, because of, probably because of my age I can't not associate Lara Croft with without thinking of the PlayStation. He's a bit he's old, everyone. We got one. We got yeah, one. And, and also, to go back to the Xbox One uh, demo thing, don't forget, alongside Laura Croft, we also had the car from Forza as a mascot. <laughs> yeah, it was massive. Yeah, X if Xbox had a fighting game, the main characters, the oh, the only two characters will be John Halo and Forza car. Oh, dear. Um, so, that's out February 14th. Yeah. Um, On Valentine's Day. I know. That's what I thought that was fitting. Bit, uh, well, that was fitting. Um, 
Uh, next game up was Detective Pikachu Returns, come, still are coming out on um, October 6th, and I'm still the only one who thinks this game looks good. This game still looks kind of rough, if you ask me. It does look improved from the first trailer, but yeah, you can tell about the gra- graphics-wise. You can see it. Hard for piece of gra- uh, texture. It, it just looks like a, a sl- slightly cleaned up Wii game, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I looked at the um, I looked at Detective Pikachu. I, I I feel like this is the thing that Pokemon Company's been like with Detective Pikachu, where they're so on and off with it on whether they want it to be um, a franch a franchise. So like they got the, they put a lot of effort into the DS ge- the 3DS game. Then they went really really silent with it. Then it's suddenly a movie. Then they went really really silent with it. And now they've done another one. So, well, I mean, you never know. the The film might have been in development, like when the when the game came out, and then after the film's success, they might have decided, "Oh, we're gonna we'll try it again." I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But I, I will be honest. Um, I think the film's success is the big reason why this uh, game exists. And I say that that's what I said. That's what I said. After the film was successful, they thought, "Oh, they could try this again." I, I still think though. I'm wondering how many people that will uh, wondering how many people still remember that movie because I don't you don't hear people talk about when it comes to video game adaptation. I don't think it generates as much conversation as like your Castlevanias, your Arcane, your Sonic movies. Well, I say with Castlevania and Arcane, just because they're still pretty recent. Like Arcane came out a couple of years ag- a couple of years ago. And and it's getting a season two, and Castlevania is still going. Whereas the technology... I don't know that, I don't really hear that many people talk about the Sonic movies. I think you de- they definitely gen- well, they definitely leave. I think they left more of a lasting impact than Detective Pikachu did. I feel like Detective Pikachu left a bit of an impact at the time, but again, I say it's because it's just because it's more recent. So, um, well, well, I'll I've got the review job for that, so I'll let you know how that is when it comes out. But oh my god, the next game looked terrible. Uh, Trombone oh, yeah. Champ. <laughs> it, it's the worst aspects of Wii Music. Yeah. Yeah, do, you want, do you want to know why I think this game is not going to be very good? Even the audio for the presentation was doing terribly. Yeah, it's just like it's. it's Even just, that could not do it. Make this really, game seem good. There's this really good song in the background here. <laughs> over it and it's like oh shut the fuck yeah God. no yeah i i've heard it i've just done this sounds like ass i hated everything that i was i was like begging this trailer to come to an end i know for some reason in the background it goes to all italian foods like randomly pasta oh yeah that's because they were playing that famous um italian uh, uh song yeah, um, but what I think to cut to though in the background, yeah. random pasta. The um, so that's that. Yeah, was... what? Do, yeah, like uh, like what we think of when we think of uh, when we think of Italy. Oh, we think of uh, pasta, pizza. Just get all the stereotypes out. The Maybe way some. Now. Next one. Next one up. Um, Battle Crush. Beta test is, uh, is in October. This game looks terrible. Yeah, yep. it. I'm. I think it'll be fun for people who like Pokemon Unite, but they already have Pokemon Unite, so they won't care. Uh, then you had War Tales two, and apparently people really like this one, but I've never no, it's just, no, it's just War Tales. War Tales, sorry, yeah, no, what's the? It's, uh... it's not War Tales two. No, War Grow two. That's what I'm getting mixed up with. That was also in this thing. We'll get to that later, but um. War Tales, that didn't look very good either. Yeah. Uh, Contra, Operation Galuga. Wow, this the remake looked... of the original. Wow, this looks like a terrible remake. Yeah, like, like just do it and pixel art. Like the fr- just yeah. pixelize it. You don't need to do 3D. Like, you can one hundred percent tell this was done by the same just in the same engine that did Rogue Core. All I can yeah. say is um, that you saw the um, the fr- there was frame rate drops in single player. Then they showed some multiplayer gameplay, which was a big mistake because the frame rate is appalling in the trailer. Yeah. And this was their best step forwards yeah. for it. Do you want do you want to know what it looks like? It looks like I'm looking. It looks like I'm looking at 
fake footage, uh, footage that those mobile advertisements use for their fake ads. Yeah. Um, but then they picked up my mood because they showed off a, a new tactical RPG called um, Unicorn Overlord. It's uh, developed by Vanillaware and published by Atlas. So it's the combo that made 13 Sentinels, which was a brilliant game. I still... I still stand by. We are getting too many tactical RPGs. It does feel like they're coming out in um We have gotten like we've gotten so fucking many like over the last yeah. few years. It's just gotten me tired of it. Um you might not be happy next year then, Elliot. There's a couple more coming next year. Um But I I'll be honest though. Vanillaware uh, got really into my good graces with 13 Sentinels, so this is a day one for me. They've earned my respect for that with that game, so I've I've definitely got to get buy that one. Comes out March eighth. I thought this one. I thought graphically it looks great. Yeah, it's got a great art style to it. Yeah. Um, I'll be interested to see what it actually plays like because it doesn't. It it looks like it plays very differently to other Vanillaware games, particularly Thirteen Sentinels. It plays very differently, but that's what I expect considering this is a fantasy setting rather than whereas um, it was. Uh, 13 Sentinels was uh, modern day Japan slash futuristic Japan slash World War II Japan. It, 13 Sentinels has a weird storyline. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to the time travel physics in that one. We'll be here all day. Um, I'm definitely going to pick that one up. It's not up for pre-order yet, but um, I found it interesting that they put they gave Nintendo, at least if it's not a multiplayer, it's got exclusivity. I think they're Atlas were not happy with how PlayStation marketed 13 Sentinels because they're in it kind of financially bombed on there. Yeah, and now it's coming out on PS Plus next month. Oh, yeah, it is coming to PS Plus next month. For the love of God, if you've got the PS Plus subscription, if you still stayed on PS Plus and you've got the subscription level to get 13 Sentinels, please get it. It's no. really good. Uh, I know you don't like... I'm I'm doing what Ren's doing with Cowboy Bebop. I'm not doing it just to piss you off. Okay. Next up... Uh... Yeah, I, I, Elfers, I just don't really care. I really don't care about visual novels. Yeah, and even though I think it tones down the visual novel aspect to it, it's it's not going to win you over if you didn't like those. It's the reason why I still haven't played uh, Digimon Survive. Mm. Next up, uh, new look, another look at Luigi's Mansion 2 HD coming... It looks like Luigi's Mansion 2... In HD. Eh. But it's, um... I mean, it looks fine, but I wasn't a big fan of Luigi's Mansion 2. What I found surprising, though, is this is coming in the summer of 2024. Again, I feel like this is a trailer you could have saved for the first Direct of next year. Yeah. Considering how far off it is. And they're not really adding anything new there. No, it's just you new know, multiplayer options, I think, and that's it. The thing I find it more com most confusing is in the last era, they teased this and Peach Showtime, which kind of implying, oh, these are good ways away. And then in the next one, they're just like, oh, no, here's the four trailers. And you just think, what's what that then? Yeah, it does seem a bit weird how they're marketing that one. Um, so a bit of external stuff. So uh, next up, is, they talked about the Nintendo Museum, which is supposedly going to open in March of 2024, which is a which is significant for people who listen to Nate the Hates podcast. <laughs> now might be significant, um, but I love the idea of Nintendo Museum because Nintendo is quite cagey about their game development. So I'm wondering. Will this museum give a little more insight into that? Uh, I have a feeling it's mostly just going to be showing off Nintendo's games or whatnot. Yeah. Or just like the I said, the they're, they're going to show off like a lot of the... Uh, it would be cool if they show off like some of the old stuff they did before the NES, like like replicas of the arcade machines or the pong machines they did. Or even some of their toys, like the um, the, and, the grabber or the, um, the those uh, le things that those blocks that Lego tried to sue them over. And then the Virtual Boy will just be in a dusty corner, forever no. forgotten. Yeah, we we kind of did this. Let's not acknowledge it. it. It's like that. Um, it's like that uh, scene from Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated where they saw the Scrappy Doo statue. Look away, Daphne. We promise never to mention this. Never. 
There's um, there's actually a great. Um, do you remember there was a direct where Reggie was on camera and he said, "Hey, we don't talk about Virtual Boy. It's listening." Yeah. No, <laughs> it's a it's quite a good gag if you can ever spot it. It's, um, uh, I really feel uh, it's coming supposedly in March, but it. I mean, I would cons- if I'm a, if I ever go back to Japan, I would definitely consider visiting. Yeah. Um. Next up. Uh, uh, and then they went into Amiibo news. Um, we got a release date November for the Zelda and Ganondorf from Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, January, we have the Noah and Mio from Xenoblade Free Double Pack. And... Bad news, bad news, Nintendo. Cav is going to be buying out all your stock as well as a lot of jars. <laughs> oh, shut up. And um, the good news is 2024. It's confirmed we will be getting a Sora amiibo to complete the Smash Brothers set. And you were saying we wouldn't. I was getting very concerned. I said, I kept saying, no, they're going to do it. They want to fill up the Smash lineup. And you said, no, they won't. (laughs) Well, Square has been quite petty in the past. I am quite glad to be wrong. I was more concerned that Disney would not want Nintendo selling something that they couldn't sell in their store and their theme parks or they would be more restricted about selling because they do own a portion of kingdom hearts which i find bizarre they haven't really done much with it in the theme parks then i would have thought that's something you'd want to capitalize on well probably because it also needs to work out a deal with square and what what they're allowed to show off yeah it's a bit like when people were talking about the idea of sony buying square enix i'm kind of like you know they wouldn't own Kingdom Hearts if they did that. They'd own a portion of Kingdom Hearts, but they would not own it. I actually think if... Uh, and I'm going to be a bit bold on this one. I think if PlayStation bought Square Enix, it would be the end of Kingdom Hearts. Because I don't think Sony and Disney want to work with each other much anymore. I think they're only sort of like doing it because of the Spider-Man stuff. And then as soon as they're going to be done with that, they don't want to talk to each other again. Hmm. Meanwhile, I'm just there thinking, stop buying each other. For God's sake, stop buying each other all the time. It's, um, I mean, Square Enix not in the best position right now because they've apparently lost $2 billion in value with um, Final Fantasy XVI. But well, I, well, well, that was, I thought that was a success. It was a success. It, but... it, it was. That's been labeled misinformation. IGN got called out for promoting it. Oh, so it's, uh, that, that was complete mis- That was complete bullshit. Yeah, so Square has lost all that money, but it predated Final Fantasy XVI because right. it had three major flops in the in a row. It was Marvel's Avengers, Forspoken, yeah. and Babylon's Fall all flopped in a row before Final right, Fantasy XVI. Right, so that's where they've lost their money, not the Final yeah. Fantasy XVI. Good, because I... Uh, oh, my God, because I saw a lot of Xbox fans on Twitter... That were going on about this is what happens when PlayStation gets an exclusivity deal. Thank God that we that we bought Bethesda. I'm like, no, that no. When the main difference, Bethesda the games were selling really well on PlayStation I, when they had those exclusivity uh, deals. Shut up. Go back to your Master Chief body pillow. Like I really. <laughs> Why do you buy actual good consoles, you idiots? Hey, I, hey, I'm not having that one. I actually do like some of the new Xbox stuff, and it's uh, they are getting way better. You've uh, the only Xbox game you mentioned you like is Hi-Fi Rush. I like Starfield. Well, you're one of the only people who do. No, no, lots of people like Starfield. It's, it's a really good game. I'm... Yeah, but do you want to know what else you have? Redfall. Redfall, yeah, Redfall's a disaster, but we've also had Falls of Horizon 5, and we're getting well off topic. Um, yeah. All I can say. Uh, but it, I re- I'm really glad we're getting a Sora amiibo. Uh, I'm, I was really worried because I bought a custom shelf and it had the Sora spot ready to go. And I was like, if this doesn't get an Amiibo, this is going to look so weird. Yep, just one empty spot. But um, Yeah, because that's what people are going to be worried about. Worried about. I promise you now, people wouldn't be upset that there, was a, that there was a missing spot. People will be most upset that you have an Amiibo wall. It looks, oh, t- trust me, it looks awesome. Uh, I will actually put, the guy who does it does it on Etsy, I'll put his um, details in, dis- I'll, I'll, if I can find his details again, I'll put his details in the subscription because it's a, it's, if you got the money for it, it's a really good purchase. But um, next up, uh, but I, I mean, 
uh, Reese, you don't really collect many amiibos, but you're a big Xenoblade fan. Are you going to pick yeah. up the Noah and Mio double pack? Probably not. <laughs> okay. And Elliot, you like Tears of the Kingdom, but you don't pick up a lot. And you did. Yeah, I think you got a few of the Zelda amiibo. Uh, I've got two. Right. So you're probably not going to pick these up either. Probably not, but that's more just because I feel like I'll miss the date and it'll be sold out. I've um. It's I've, the exact same thing happened with the Link amiibo. I've uh, put myself on the list to get an email as soon as they go on sale. But um, ne uh, next up, let's get back to some games because uh, next up, a uh, new replacement since Pac-Man ninety nine is not getting any new content. Um, we're getting F zero ninety nine. And a lot of people are probably pissed off with this. Because, uh, again, there were a lot of rumours we began a new F-Zero game. People were saying things like, Oh boy, F-Zero GX remake. I think that, I think that potentially is still on the cards. Uh, but, um, yeah, no. But F-Zero 99, I, it's really good. I've been playing a bunch of it um, before we started this. And... It's unbelievably good fun. Have you guys had a chance to play it yet? No, yet. No, I don't really care. Um, it, it, it's definitely. I'll put it this way: I like it more. I like it way more than Pac-Man '99, which I didn't really enjoy. I think it's on a level with Tetris '99, but. It's not as good as Mario Thirty Five for me. Mario Thirty Five is still the pinnacle of these. Um, mm. Battle Royale games Nintendo's done, in my opinion. I would, like to, I would like to know, folks, you are seeing the only person who still praises Mario 99. I love Mario 35. I would really wish they had kept it going. because It's not good, dude. It's, I'm, good I'm sorry, it's not. Ah, yes, because I love playing World 1 1, World 1 3, and World 1 4 over and over on a continuous loop. I love doing that in my Mario games. I, I will admit, I wish they did. Loop, the levels were a bit um, more expansive in terms of like which ones you got but I really did like Mario 35 but f 99 does a really good job I think the biggest problem I have with it is the best part about the races is the Grand Prix where you really are competing against 99 other players and you're going to do multiple races and they're quite short potentially and you've got to go on at a certain time so for example I'm gonna miss the next Grand Prix because it's ten minutes from now, and we're still and we've still got more to cover. And I wish I wish the Grand Prix were more accessible at times. So like I could pick to just do a single race, or I could pick to do a series of races. Um, I also haven't delved too much into the customization options, but I haven't unlocked much. I do like the rival system; you get extra experience points. There's be... the, I've, I'm currently looking at uh, a. a uh cosmetic thing for the blue falcon is now red and white it's not the blue falcon anymore i know i turned mine green <laughs> um but um what you betray her. it's the you're riding the green falcon now exactly but, um... which sounds which sounds like a uh which sounds like a villain from a spider-man fan fiction <laughs> De deal with me spider-man i'm the green falcon um you're a loony <laughs> um, Reese, have you played? A, have you have you played any of F Zero Ninety Nine yet? Uh, no, not yet. Does but I will give it a go when I get a chance. Uh, the other thing I've learned though is I'm really not as good at F Zero as I thought because I, I it is re it's really hard to make those turns sometimes. But at the same time, I think I have more fun with this than if I played F Zero on NSO. For example, I'm also wondering how they're now going to sell F Zero Advance to, when that eventually comes to NSO by saying, uh, "Well, here's another another one that's pretty much exactly like what you can play on F Zero Ninety Nine." But mm. um, so na next up was thing called. Uh, then we got a couple of um, League of Legends spin-offs. We've got one called Bandle Tale that's coming out in 2024, and Song of New New. That comes out November first. I saw of... I saw Bandle's tale. I thought this is League of Legends. This is what I want. Is... 
Go ahead, Elliot. What? This is League of I just, Yeah, I just saw it. It's like, this is a League of Legends game? This is what I've wanted League of Legends to do for ages. I've wanted them to make spin-off games and material with these characters. Because there's, there's a lot of good to be said about these characters. Yeah, but, I mean, this looks like a fucking Stardew Valley game. What the hell? Like, I, I would have liked it if there had been games like around Nami or Amumu. But... Um, especially considering that we don't, like, Jinx has already got her role in Arcane, so she's already been well exposed. And, um, Cal and Callista and Viego have already got their thing in Ruination, in Ruination, which, by the way, folks, read Ruination, genuinely really, really good. I'm not a League of Legends fan, but I really like it. Now I just wanted to give a Moo Moo something now, because he's my favourite. Well, the only question I've got to ask is, do I need to play these before Arcane Season 2 comes out to understand the plot? I don't think so. Yeah, just all of a sudden, Bandle comes into Arcane Season 2. We talked about a bunch of things that were built up throughout that game. I must be honest, though. I'm... I'm si I like getting into the League of... I love the, Leg the universe of League of Legends more than the actual game, so... I might put my money where my mouth is. If the reviews are good for these ones, I'll pick them up. Um, WarioWare got a new trailer, still coming out in October. I didn't think they really sold this one quite well. I mean, they, they haven't said any... I mean, here's a question. We heard Wario a bit in this. Is this still Chris Martineau or is that someone else? Uh, it, it's not Charles Martinet. This is the new voice. Right. Yeah. Um, so oh, I, just because they never, I know they said like there was a new voice actor in Mario Wonder. I don't know if they say anything about there being a new one in this. Uh, yeah, it's it, it, they have said all games going forwards now. It's not Charles Martinet. Oh. Um, but I think they made it look quite good. Really reminded me a lot of the Wii version of um, WarioWare. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just basically it just looked a lot like a. Uh, a smooth moves sort start sort of game, and I think they'll partner quite well with. Um, I think they'll partner quite well with the um, what do you call it? Uh, the 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 recent war the other WarioWare game that's on Switch. Oh uh, yeah, I know. I uh, get it together. Yeah, that was it. Game? Get it together. I really yeah. like. Uh, am I? I'm a bit weird. Well, am I a bit? It weird? was okay. It was okay. Not as like enjoyable as the other ones were. I thought. I do. I did like the fact that the playing as the characters did add a bit of variety to the micro games, but mm. it, it. I do like the fact this one has a bit more of a uniform control to it. Yeah. But um, next up, let's see. Um, uh, this was uh, one of the highlights for me. Euden Chronicles Hundred Heroes finally gets a release date, April twenty third. The Suikoden successor that was a big hit on Kickstarter has finally got a release date. And it looks great. This game looks amazing every time I see it. I'm glad I'm finally going to get a chance to play it. Didn't really like the spin-off game they did as a prequel, but um, I think this one was the one I was waiting for. I think it's also yeah. better as a... Some of, the, uh, some of the things in the... the things in it kind of amusing me like you have this headquarters it's called the headquarters yeah there uh, it, it does look like it's a very fun rpg and the fact you've got that many characters is going to be very interesting for mixing and matching yeah um, it's suddenly turned into the wonderful uh, 101 but um i think I'm RPGs. Gonna... the only thing i could really say i, I could be very i could be very wrong because i haven't played any of the games in it but the only thing I can really say that has like this a variety of characters or a number of characters you can play as this big as like Grand Blue Fantasy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that has a lot of characters. That has there. a lot of characters, but again, it, this is. Um, I do find it interesting they managed to get. They are probably going to get this out before the Suikoden One and Two remasters. By the way, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink coming out next year. Genuinely excited for that one. Yeah, that's I like one of my most liked games of the year. I agree. Yeah, that looks amazing. Um, incidentally, I was gonna pick up. I, I might pick up a Uden Chronicles if I want to play it on the go on the Switch, but I, it's a uh, it's on Game Pass day one, so I might probably pick up the Xbox version. 
I have no choice but to get the Switch version because I cancelled my subscription to Game Pass. Woo! Next up, going to e- e- um, uh, Eastward, the um, indie here is getting an, um, an up- a DLC update. Octopia. It- I did not know this game was out. Now I instantly want to get it. It looks lovely. I've played it. It's amazing. They have done a new physical... They've finally put it in a physical box, Elliot. So if you want to pick up a physical version, you can now. It's it's a really good throwback to like Zelda dungeon crawlers and games like that. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on like the sort of Stardew Valley life sim stuff. That's more going to come in the DLC, I think. But I did say you don't need to have played through the main story to access the DLC. So... You can def. I would say this is worth a pick up. Uh, next up, Wargrove Two. Now a lot of people have said they like Wargrove, but I've n- never played yeah. it. Yeah, it's another tactical RPG. This one yeah, looks very, like very advanced wars inspired. Yeah, it's very it looks advanced very wars. advanced warsy. It does look like it has the same sort of sense of humor as well. Though yeah. I'm very concerned with what Nintendo's going to have to do with like banning people, with considering you can make your own cutscenes, there is going to be some very inappropriate ones that get posted online. Oh boy, who's looking forward to the Rule Thirty Four on that one? <laughs> ne- um, next up, yeah, it's going to be Overwatch all over again. October fifth yeah. is the release date of it. If this gets good reviews, I might check this one out for a brief period. But I don't think this is one I'm going to stick. A long time in if I pick it up, but I want to wait and hear a word on that one. Um, but this is one I've already pre-ordered because I like lo- because I played it on early access on Steam. Really liked it, and I'm want to get. I'm looking forward to getting the full version. Dave the Diver. It's this looks great. I really like the look of this actually. Oh shit! Um, while you um, I've been playing it on. Um, I have been playing it on. Uh, Steam, it's really good fun. It's a the pixel re- works look great. It, what I find weird is that you get um, a thing right where you where you can co- you sort of collect the fish. It's like trading cards, and the um, the person you give them to who wants to pick up the cards is a fat balding Ash Ketchum. Yeah. <laughs> This this game just generally looks really good. Like I like the whole exploring the ocean thing. I like the whole look of the sort of running the restaurant. Mm. That, it, it generally looks great. I really want to give it a go. I yeah. I can promise you, it's amazing. I seriously check this one out. Um, I I've, I've got nothing but good to say about it. I will say that the um. I will say that this. I'm, I'm the, sorry, guys. Calvin is currently closing those Pornhub tabs. Uh, the sushi. I will say the problem is that the sushi gameplay is really re. Is re. It's can it can get on top of you. I I failed a couple of times on that one because of just how badly I screwed up. Yep, that was my my kind of thing. Yep. Uh, to like they have a thing of take this person's order, then you've got to give it to the chef, then grate some wasabi and pass that. Anyway, to the anyway, uh, next up, Mario Kart Eight. Mario Kart Eight DLC that's finally finished off its run. Yeah, I I completely forgot we were only getting like six of these. I thought we were getting like eight. Yep. So the sixth one, the final one's out, and they've announced uh, one of the courses. It's uh, Daisy Cruiser. No, nope, Daisy Circuit. Daisy Circuit, sorry, Daisy Cruise is already in it. Daisy Circuit, it's which four. Is from Mario Kart. Yeah, whenever I be honest, whenever I think of the uh, da- Daisy Circuit, I always just think of uh, the Scott the Was line. Yes. You know, I don't like the I, I don't like the idea of Luigi and Daisy being a couple because I imagine that the Tap was just smell terrible. But they seem like one of those kind of couples. Yes, I. I do you know, it's the first thing that came to my head when I saw the fountain in the trailer. Excellent. Got that pre-order sorted. Um. The next... Oh yeah, uh, yeah. We had a live footage, live footage of Calvin pre-ordering his next foot porn magazine. No, I pre-ordered um, the Noah and Mio Amiibo. They just came on on BC the foot... UK show. BC, BC puts its shoes two hundred and sixty nine and sixty nine. That one's got Pamela, age fifty eight, in. Stop it. Um, uh, uh, there's um, 
So I were but the biggest bit. So he didn't talk about too many of the courses, annoyingly. Which is fine. I, wish... I mean, this game now has funky mode. Yeah, because they got Funky Kongs in. Um, they Who brought... bought the most broken character in Mario history. Yep. Uh, they've also added Diddy Kong at last. Um, and then the, uh, Pauline and Peachette. Pauline? Who the fuck is Peachette? Toad the... about Toad... When Toadette gets the crown. Oh, yeah. yes, that was it. it was like... Do you not remember all the Bowsette memes? Oh, I remember the Bowsette memes, but I... I, I, I am so disappointed they didn't decide to capitalize on that and bring her in. I, oh, no. I would have loved that. I would have loved to be able to play Bowser. That would have been so funny. I wish, I wish though, in, maybe you'll I mean, we get Wiggler in it. That's co close enough. I would have taken out Peachette and I would have put Dixie Kong in there. I feel like Dixie should have been here. Yeah, we got Dixie Kong in any other game though. Mario Kart Tour. She's in Who that. the fuck plays Mario Kart all? Uh, I actually have um not, my friend who was meant to stay with us in the Moshtel in Varken. He plays Mario Kart Tour a lot. Um, but I mean, I like the. No, I, I would have. I would take it out. Peach, yeah, putting Queen Bee. Queen Bee would have been a good choice as well for the for the, Just for the lols. Just funny. Yeah, I was going to say for the funny. lols that would have been good, but um. Because there's now like four versions of Peach in the game. You've got Peach, Baby Peach, Pink Gold Peach, and now Peachette. Yeah. But still, I don't care how much effort i got to put into it. I will get good with Diddy Kong because I've always wanted Diddy Kong back in Mario Kart. Um, I will obviously wait more on the courses. I mean, Daisy Circuit is not one of the better known courses from Wii. Yeah. Um, I mean, Elf has already have like two, two of the most, what the two most well-known ones in there. I really want another Bowser's Castle in there because there's not enough of those in the game. Like, I think we've really got the new one. Do we have any of the retro Bowser's Castles in there? Yeah, the main one I want. I don't want another Rainbow Road. I don't want not another Rainbow Road because we've got. I, I want. Like, I want the more specifically. I want the 3DS one, or like whatever one it was where you could drive on the moon. The 3DS Rainbow Road. Yeah. That's already in the game. Yeah. That's, oh, that's in already. So that's already in there. It's. And Elliot's fallen over. Um, I'm then... an idiot! <laughs> News Why are you doing the Grinch echoes? It's not funny otherwise. There's. um, The net. What's. I mean, if it was going to be any Bowser's Castle, which one would you guys want in? The Wii version. Yeah, I'd... Wii. I'd go N64. Hmm. So that's the um, the next one. So that's uh, the end of Mario Kart now. I mean, it feels a bit bittersweet that we're saying goodbye to Mario Kart 8 soon, but it has to get to the end of its content at some point. And I'm going to enjoy it for at least a year before... I'm get... wondering... Yep, hopefully we'll get Mario Kart 9 soon. I think it's going to... I think they want to give a little bit of a gap with that before... Between the new console launch and whatever they want to, whatever um, they want to do Mario Kart Nine. I'm wondering what like DLC they're going to do next because obviously Mario Kart was like to satiate the Smash Bros fans. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine they're going to do it. I think it's just going to be NSO is going to be to satiate the fans while we wait uh, for the console. Yeah, because who does? Because all the games they came out with recently. What's the latest D uh, Game Boy game? Quest of Camelot. Quest for Camelot was a weird choice. A game that people a film that everyone forgot about, and the only pe one reason people remember it is because of the nostalgia critic review. What about um? I mean, I'm looking forward to Golden Sun coming on there. Like Golden, the day Golden Sun comes on, a lot of people are going to go uh, on NSO that day. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um. The next trailer was um, a new map for Among Us, The Fungal. Which, for some reason, that was a two-minute-long trailer. Yeah, yeah, that felt weird. That was such a long All trailer. to announce a new map. So, um, they obviously did a bit of a scissor reel of uh, games that are coming to the, to the, to the Switch um, between, uh, um, between now and summer of next year. And... They finished off... And, and the moment they showed a warrior was a guy laying an egg. 
I thought I found um, <laughs> that was fun. Uh, we're going to go over obviously the details of. Uh, we're going to give our thoughts on the Switch upcoming release schedule in a bit. Bit, but um, the final trailer was a remaster of Paper Mario Thousand Years. Not War. a remaster, a full on remake. It looks like a re- it does look like a remake, yeah, completely, mm. and it looks amazing. Yeah. Thousand Year Door is already the best Paper Mario, so to have a new way of playing that is amazing. Uh, yeah, this is the one announcement that actually got me excited, if I'm honest. Reese? Yeah, this must be one of the best looking Switch games. Yeah, like, <laughs> holy shit. It looks like you're taking a lot of the arse down things that they learned from like games like Origami King and just threw it into this. It looks, it, it looks amazing. Um, have you guys played the original GameCube game? Yeah. yeah. No, because I because it's it costs over a hundred quid. It does. It's really expensive to get Thousand Year Door on the original GameCube disc. But I imagine that price might go down now with the remaster. No, I don't think so. Um, so presumably it's a day one. This is a really good release. It, they only had a twenty twenty four release date on it. They didn't specify. When in 2024? So I imagine that's the middle of the year release. Yeah. It does seem also weirdly cyclical, actually, because one of the last games to come to the Wii U was Paper Mario Color Splash. And one of the last games to come to the Switch will be Thousand Year Door Remake. Have they just frozen completely? No, I mean... I mean, meanwhile, Reese was saying he obviously does this as well because he wants Super Mario, Super Paper Mario, to be yeah. released. Because, because uh, I'm a big fan of that, which uh, a lot of people weren't, but I was. I think it's. I think people have become more appreciative as the years have gone on. Yeah, I, I, um, I agree. Mostly with the release of things like Sick of Stars and Color Splash. I mean, which I, I still stand by. Color Splash is not that bad. Color Splash is okay. Okay, um, can, can I ask what your opinions of Origami King are? Because we never really discussed our opinions of Origami King. Never played it. I, I, I didn't play it. Really? I was the only one who played Origami King out of the three of us. Yeah. Yeah. I think I liked it more than most people, but I also agree with Scott that was the battles system it makes no sense to be there because you don't, cause you don't get experience no, points. There's no point in the battles. Basically, yeah. all you get is coins. All I can say is, considering the lot of, looks like a lot of efforts going into Thousand Year Door, do not change too much, guys. Thousand Year Door is really great. Do not change too much on this one. Like, don't do something stupid like getting rid of the experience points again. Nah, yeah. from, it looks like uh, they've. From the looks of it, it seems like it's going to be pretty faithful. I think the main thing they've changed is like the graphic, some of the art style. Okay. They- and they've also undone some of the censorship as well. Uh, the computer uh, that talks to Peach, in the, in the West, it has a green light, whereas in Japan, originally, it had red. It's got red in this trailer. So they are going full HAL 9000 with it. Yeah. Why Why do they change it, though? It's weird. Uh, uh, probably trying to avoid copyright. They were trying yeah, uh, to avoid, um, avoid, avoid copyright. Yeah, because it. a red light is so iconic to HAL... It actually um, is, yes. Uh, <laughs> but I will say, I will say, um, it, it, I'm really excited for this one. I'm very happy to get another way to play um, Thousand Year Door. And if more people play Thousand Year Door because of it, it'll be great. I heard yeah. rumours that this was a thing, and yet I thought it wasn't true. Because I thought, why the hell would Nintendo do something that uh, um, of good of an idea? Uh, out of just sheer whim and they just decided to do it Mm -hmm. so congratulations to that one and that was nintendo direct i'll start with you elliot what did you think of it uh Uh, mid as hell mid um reese yeah average for me there's a few bright spots but most of the announcements were just bland or didn't interest me Put it this way, without trying to sound too negative on this one, it feels like a game that... It feels like a Direct that was made with the idea of 
this is we're coming to the end of the generation. We're not there yet, but we're coming to that end. No, even then, you could still like do some ma- a, a number of major releases. Like as an example, what if they didn't reveal? I feel like one thing that really, uh, that really kind of helped to butcher it was a. Uh, them revealing the Peach game and Luigi's Mansion 2 in the previous one. They could have easily shown it off in this, more often this one. I, I, yeah. I kind of agree with that one. I find that weird. But the, I know, the other one is, though, there was only two major releases other than Paper Mario they could have really shown off. And obviously they've decided with those two to save them for next year. Yeah, because well, we know one of them's done... We just don't know about the other one. So let's get to the elephant in the room. Because in my opinion, the one thing that would have made this better is if Paper Mario had been the opening announcement and the closing announcement had been Metroid Prime 4. I keep saying that's not happening for Switch now. No, it's happening for Switch. It's just, is it going to be now a cross-gen title? I guarantee it is. I'm starting to... With 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 the next console so close to coming now, there'd be no reason not to. I yeah. think- and especially if we haven't had as much uh, as much of a look on it as as with otherwise, like this is a, this is basically a Breath of the Wild situation for me. I think, yeah. I think it will be a cross gen title, but I believe it's going to be a launch title now. Yeah, but um, because I think we're we're all in agreement that Metro Prime Four is coming now, second half of twenty twenty four. Uh, if no. that. So, so, uh, Reese, what did you say? I said, if that, I could see it being delayed even more. Uh, since we still don't have that much known about it. Okay, uh, Elliot, what do you think? As I keep saying, I don't do the whole spec... I don't normally do the speculation thing. I I just wait. I'm I'm infinitely patient with these, kind, with these kinds of things. I'm losing my patience, though, with Metro Prime 4. Especially considering that they showed off Metro Prime HD and it was really good. Uh, this year, I just think you now go if you go if the, if it's not there in February, you've now gone a full year without talking about Metro Prime Four at a time you really <laughs> should have talked about Metro Prime Four. And if my you... guess, my my guess is just that there was meant to originally meant to come out after Metro Prime Four, and well, I think that what's actually happened. Uh, but here's the thing, I think. But the thing is. They didn't have to release it. They could have actually released Metroid Prime sooner. That game was done for over a year. So mm. they easily could have released it at any point. Which to me... Because we saw the rating was done in 2021. So that makes me wonder why then. And I do think that Met- they have, they're a bit more confident about Metroid Prime 4. Obviously it has now... But um, I'm looking forward to Metroid Prime 4... But I'm starting to lose my patience a little bit. I mean, it's probably going to be great when we see it, but um, what do you? I mean, as I as I keep saying, take as long as they need to. I I I can wait as long as as long as I can. We're gonna have plenty of games to play in the meanwhile. Um, yeah. Only there was only one other one that I'm um, that I know about that I know is done, and I don't know why they haven't um, put it forwards. But I don't know if Elliot knows what it's done, so I'll keep that one to myself. I probably won't. Uh, yeah. Saints Row reboot on Switch. No, no, no. Um, Lord of the Rings Gollum on Switch. Actually, you... no, that's already been confirmed. Yeah. Has what? It? Why? Yeah, that's already that's already coming out apparently on Switch. Oh God. They've got uh, the same. Actually, that's something I'm a bit surprised by. Hogwarts Legacy wasn't shown. That's coming to Switch. That's yeah. That, 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 I think that's being delayed again. And also, I don't really give a shit about Hogwarts Legacy. So, do whatever yeah. you fucking want with it. It didn't take up. Uh, time. It didn't take up my my time in this direct. Um. Uh, the one is, but I think overall decent direct. The high points were really high for me. Like Thousand Year mm. Door looks great. I love getting the release date for a Uden Chronicles. Uh, the Amiibo stuff was great for me. No, that's just me. Um, I really like. I really like Tomb Raider collection. Um. And Unicorn Overlord looks great. Still F- one of the best titles yeah. from what we've heard. Um, F zero ninety nine. I really am enjoying it. I re- I just think it's. Uh, I think I'll. 
It's going to be very interesting when we get into next year how Nintendo wants to do their marketing because when do they want to reveal the console? How do they want to reveal the console? And when do they want to talk about the launch titles for that console? And how do they do it in a way that doesn't interrupt the sales of the Switch games they have coming out to fill in the gap? It'll, it's going to be a good year, actually, I think. So uh, If you look at the... How do you guys feel about the Switch lineup? Let's say going until... Well, we have dates for these things. So let's say going until summer 2024. So that's Detective Pikachu, the Pokemon DLC, um, Mario RPG, Another Code, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Princess Peach... Um, uh, the Princess Peach game, Luigi Mansion 2, and uh, Paper Mario 1000 Year Door remake. Still, still a strong lineup. That's quite a strong lineup. That's good. How many of those are though games that you're very excited for, Elliot? Though, let's be fair here. Not that many. I I get the impression. Probably only Thousand Year Door and RPG. Okay. I mean, it's a good lineup. Uh, it's a good lineup though. I'm. I'll be very interested to see how it goes. Mm. So, next thing up was the state of play, and PlayStation kind of had to do a bit of... PlayStation actually, I think, uh, undersold this one, because they said they were only going to talk about... Um, uh, get, they thought they were mostly going to talk about third-party games and indie games, and mostly games that had been previously announced. Which and means, they did not open this show strong. Which, is, which I also thought... It was a bit weird, because I thought... Nintendo, um, I thought that Sony, I actually think I'm in a position of, there's a lot of games announced at the minute. I wouldn't mind a few more updates. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. They did not open this thing great. The first thing they opened with was a game called Baby Steps. AKA Some... at, at Calvin's morning walk to work. <laughs> and um, comes out summer 2024. This looks awful to control. Yeah, like I said in our group chat, it looks like a 3D version of Quop, the old oh, Flash game. Oh, yeah, it does. Um, Elliot, what do you think of this one? It looks uh, it looks like it's another one of those games that's trying to be funny. but And the one joke, really, that we saw is, you can use a grappling hook. Grappling hook? Yeah, grappling hook. I don't have a grappling hook. You can use a grappling hook. Okay. Oh, dear, yeah, it did not work out well. I'm not very interested in this one. Uh, next up was Roblox is coming to PlayStation. I'm surprised it wasn't there to begin with. Yeah. That staggered me, that one. Um, do you, you guys play Roblox? Nope. Not since I was, like, 14. Yeah, I keep... I keep... I, 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 which is led to me being shocked, because I see this, so I think, this is Roblox? Ne uh, next up, v a bit of um, VR updates. They showed off Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord coming out October. That 26th. is a dumb name. Yes. Like go, like we, we like when you look at Ghostbusters, they normally have creative names for their ghosts, and it's just like, ooh, the, the Ghost Lord. It's the Lord of the Ghosts. It does. It, yeah, no, that, that one didn't work in my opinion. Um, it would be like because. As an example, because I've been playing Cyberpunk 27 a lot, a uh, bit recently. Uh, if they they went, oh, look, it's the bad guy. The Cyber Lord. Oh, Watch dear. out, he's doing his, using his Cyber Lord gun. Uh, but they, I mean, gameplay-wise, it looked all right, but it's not something that's going to get me majorly back into VR, I don't think. Yeah. Something that is going to majorly get me back into VR is what came up next. Resident Evil 4 VR mode. It's now said it's got a winter release date. And I'm like, my God, you showed off nothing new here. Just give a re don't show it to me again until you've got a release date. What do you mean they showed mm. off nothing? They showed off nothing new. Like it, it basically looked exactly the same as it did last time we saw it. Nah, I think it... That showed off a more. What are you talking about? Showed off more of the game. Showed off a bit of the Krauser fight, the uh, the whole thing in the lake with uh, 
Big Bubba. Yeah, it's all well and good, but I, I, I do wish they put a release date on that. Well, I mean, what were you expecting? What were you expecting in the show off? The fact that you can fuck Ashley now? No, I think I was more expecting. I, I think it was the release date was missing, and I thought, why would you put out another trailer if you don't have a significant up? If you don't have the, this is when you get to do it. Um, but they did uh, rectify that with the DLC. The separate ways DLC is coming September. 21st so that's a week from now no idea why it wasn't in there on launch <laughs> yeah that surprised me that it wasn't there at launch i find it bizarre i mean maybe, this... they, maybe they just wanted to work on it more did they are they charging for this one no idea because i, I um, am gonna we take... did get we did get like it didn't say anywhere where the price and that's what the price was i no, they said that mercenaries was a free update they didn't say anything about separate ways yeah, the mercenary stuff that adds Wesker and Anna into the mercenaries mode is a free update. Um, I think it's a. I don't think it's too expensive to get separate ways, but it does feel a bit weird they're charging for something that was in the base game originally. Yeah, um, I, mean, I don't mind. I don't mind paying for it. It's yeah, just good. No, I don't mind paying for it, but as I say, I um. I think, though, it does also look like they're changing up the story a little bit this time for the separate ways bit. Consist also, let's let's just be honest. At least it's not what The Last of Us Part 1 did. True. And yep. I will say as well, I'm wondering if it's going to provide more context for that changed ending. Um, next up, we have... Um, it's Avatar. Yeah, <laughs> still coming out December 7th. I'm, I'm actually, actually, I'm going to be honest. This game looks all right. Look at it. It looks. It looks fairly. It looks okay. Yeah, they made. They did a good job showing it off. I'll give them that. But I don't care about this franchise. Yeah, especially after how boring the second film was. Yeah, I heard the second film was pretty boring. Um, but the weird. I find I find weird about it is they showed it off better than at Ubisoft's own event. Yeah, that staggered me that that was how badly they showed that off. Um. I mean, I like how you can use the nappy weapons, how you can use the human weapons. Reset, it would be game of the year if you could ride the mechs. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, I have to wait for reviews before I even go near this one. And even then, I don't care about Avatar, so I'm not sure. At least not this Avatar. So last Airbender, give me that shit any day, but... But do you care about Gavatar? The Avatar parody that was in Gulliver's Travels. That yeah. it advertised, at least. I haven't seen, I haven't please tell, it. please tell me I'm the only I'm not the only one who remembers that film. I'm I think you are. Yeah, I've forgotten. Uh really you forgot Gulliver's Travels starring Jack Black? Oh god. I remember Travel. the original, not the update. I do uh, remember Jack Black film, yes. But um next up, uh Ghost Hunters 2 comes up. Uh, Ghost Runners, not Ghost Hunters. Yeah, go Ghost Runners 2 comes out de comes out i can't remember when there's a demo available though i think it's coming out october actually yeah it's demos available yeah, there's, a, there's a demo up now yeah so you can try it yeah. out if you want i'm not too interested in this one so i'm probably gonna skip i think it looks i think, I think it looks fun i gave the first one a try yeah, it looks all right but i'm not going like wow i really need to give this a go maybe i'll try the demo see how i feel then but mm. What yeah, about... it says that the full game is October 26. October 26, full game, same day as Ghostbusters. So, yeah, there's your Halloween fix from PlayStation. Um, Two ghost games on the same day. Uh, they also showed off a bunch of new PS5 colors you can get. So The what? silver one literally just looks like the standard PS5. I know. That's what I yeah. found surprising. I didn't... Uh, Helldivers 2 finally got a bit more of a look into what that's going to play like. Reminded me a lot of Monster Hunter in a lot of ways. and uh, But it has a release date of February the 8th. Yeah, it reminds me of Crossing Moss Hunters and Starship Troopers. Yeah, that's the combo I was getting yeah. in my head. Yeah, I'm looking at this, honestly, I'm getting some, like, Outsiders Anthem vibes. Oof. Not good vibes. So that's... um. But I, I'm willing to give that one a go. I think that would do amazing wonders for the subscription service if it came as part of that. Because this is a multiplayer-focused game. So 
having yeah. uh, tying that to the subscription service that you need to do online multiplayer would really give you a boost there. Um, for, uh, I will probably check that one out briefly just to see what the multiplayer is like. But that's coming out like a day before Persona 3 Remake or like a week after it. I can't remember which exactly, but... I mean, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is coming out like two days before Persona 3. And I'm decided to take the Witch Huge up for that. Mm. So... I'm not sleeping in February. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, trust me, it's going to get worse for you in a, in a couple of announcements. Um, yeah! <laughs> then we got a bit more of a uh, look in on Spider Man 2, which I thought was going to be the closer for the show. I'm surprised this wasn't the closer, but they show yeah. up a bit more of how the fast travel looks, uh, how you're going to be, how much bigger the city is this time that they've added Queens and the Bronx. Yeah, so we're not just locked to the Isle of Manhattan anymore. Yeah, I, I still find it funny. Uh, all the like before the game came out, people were complaining. It's the exact same map. It's just the exact same. Why can't they change it? What change New York? I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was another one that I found bizarre. That complaint. Gaming fans are idiots. But it's, yep. I can say that I am one. I will say I thought that Spider Man. I, I think Spider-Man 2 is looking like it's nailing it. It looks amazing. Stuff. Yeah, like, I can already tell this is going to be my top five of the year. Yeah, same. This it, probably... looks, it looks fantastic, dude. Yeah, this will probably be my top five. I'm, I'm going to call it now. This looks amazing. Um, next up was the, the announcement that made um, Elliot... You could hear Elliot squee across all of England. <laughs> Yeah, DLC for um, Tales of Arise uh, Beyond uh, the Dawn. I am so excited for this. Oh my god. Comes out November 9th. I presume it comes out for the Xbox version as well, because that's the version I've got. Did you ever beat Tales of Arise? I did, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no right. I didn't. I meant, I kept meaning to go back to it. I will go back and beat it at some point, definitely. Yeah, I think I beat it to, uh, get, to play this DLC. Um, if it's a direct sequel, then yeah, I think I will. But um, wh wow, they've ne it. Uh, just I, I cannot stress enough. Tales from Arise is one of the most unappreciated games of twenty twenty one. Everyone who did, everyone's an RPG fan has to play it. Also, while I'm on the subject with Tales of Arise, um, seems a bit weird. They waited two years to bring out the the biggest, the most significant DLC. Mm. I mean, I'm. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy that now the extra content we get isn't just the uh, the Sword Art Online collab that they did. Oh yeah, that was weird. Um, what do you? It, it it just it looks so good though. I'm I'm so excited. It comes out I wish it. I just wish it wasn't coming out in November because I have so much to play then. Next up was a uh, new another look at the PlayStation version of Honkai Star Rail. I'll give it this. Looks better than Genshin Impact. Yeah, and the thing yeah. is with Genshin Impact, it feels like... I don't know if you guys feel this with these sort of like very long-running live service games where after a certain point, it feels like it's it's gone too it, it's gone so long, there's so much content that you feel like you're a bit overwhelmed and you'd rather yeah. get on one of these games on no. the... I mean, you say that. Uh, I've been playing Final Fantasy Brave Exvius since launch like six years ago. Yeah, but that's the thing. You've been playing it since launch. I mean, if you came in now... It would feel like there's a little too much. That's why I think I like, I like the idea of getting on one of these on the ground level. So I might try Honkai Star Rail because I'm hearing good things about it. But I I would give it a go, honestly. But I'm in protest because YouTuber is advertising them all the time. And I do yeah. not want to keep seeing Natasha, the underworld doctor. Um, I'm going to I'm going to buy her now just to piss you off. Um... Well, it's it's a gotcha game. Thing. You can't buy it. It's a yeah. gacha game. Uh, Which is why I won't be playing it. Uh, but the uh, final before the last one, uh, Square Enix took the last two announcements. The first up was Foam Stars. It's getting the open beta, and they showed off some of the characters. The they... names of the characters give me cancer. Yeah, these are really bad. Ca it just looks like they've squashed together Overwatch and Splatoon. Like, like you get a... Like, you get an ice cream character named Mel T. I know. 
It's all uh, uh, and a uh, and a uh, and a bird character called Pen Gwyn. That was bad. Uh, but do you guys agree with me though? It does look like they just smashed together Overwatch and Splatoon. Yeah. This... Uh, that. Now it it looks like they're trying to. Do... It looks more like they combined Splatoon and Arms. And they, I mean, they combined. Uh, I mean, that being said, this also looks like they overcomplicated the rules from like Splatoon. They didn't understand that they tried to be so different from Splatoon to avoid the comparisons. And they've overcomplicated it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, there's an open beta coming. If you want to give it a go, be my guest. But every time I see Foam Stars, I just think, I have no desire to play this. Yeah. When there's so many better alternatives instead. Yeah. Just play Splatoon. That's the best one. And if you're on PlayStation, there's better online multiplayer games to play on that. Um, just you know, bottom some Rocket League, you're good. And uh, we got a new trailer for... Fin and final thing to talk about was the new trailer for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It comes out February the 29th. This is my most hyped game of 2024 now. The... Why, Square? Why? I already have Grand Blue and Persona 3 to play. And now you're making me play this so close? I know. Yeah. Uh, I'm but, not going to yeah. sleep! But this has a major selling point though, Elliot. You can drive a Segway as clown. I know, you can drive a Segway, though. <laughs> a Segway is a cannon in Midgard. I found it funny. That's the thing that people were were hyping up about. Not the fact that you can play a Sephiroth in the past. Or that Vincent and Kate Sith showed up. No, it's Cloud driving a Segway. Yeah, it looks like we've got the entire... Is this, uh, Do you think this is now we're getting the entire party in this one? We're missing Sid. Like we're only missing Sid, but yeah. he could show up in another one. But, wow, they hyped this game up well. I'm wondering how much of Seven are they going to cover in this mid-portion? Because we are, we do know this is a trilogy now, and we all get a third one down the line. Yeah. What if it, what if it turns out this, they're doing a trilogy for disc one, and the other two discs are getting their own trilogy? Because <laughs> um, I... so far, all the things we've seen is just covered in disc one. Uh, yeah, because we got the... Uh, hang on, do you get to the gold saucer in disc one? Yeah. That's like one of the first places you go after leaving Midgard. Oh, I'm looking forward to the gold saucer. It looks like they've got a lot of fun minigames in there, actually. Because I thought, well, they're not... They're, they're doing a more serious tone. They won't bring back the minigames. Oh my God, they're bringing back all the minigames. Um, and then it was like... I, I, what do you think of Kate Sith's new voice actor, considering they're not doing the Scottish accent anymore from Advent Children? I like it. I think it fits. Yeah. I think it fits Kate Sith better. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, and also, I like the fact they did give him all the ridiculousness of his character for the battles. Yeah. I, I love the combo moves. I love the look of the storyline. I'm interested to see how it's going to change how it's going to change it up with this new version of Final Fantasy VII that they're doing. It And the game, everything about it just looks amazing. Uh, what do you, Reese? You're a big Final Fantasy VII fan. What do you think of the look, this new look? Yeah, this looks absolutely fantastic. Just builds upon everything greater than the original, expands it even more. And it was announced it's coming on two discs as well. This game, two PS5 yeah. discs. Yeah. How huge is this game? Yeah. But here's the thing: Are we going to go for the collector's edition with the um the the Sephiroth statue? God, no, because I do not have that sort of income. <laughs> Same. It's it's actually cheaper than most collector's editions you get, but even then I'm thinking, I'm running out of room up for all this stuff. I'm... Well, what's, well, as I say in the group chat, congratulations, uh, Emos. You now, ha you, now have a, you now have a version of your daddy that fits perfectly into a jar. So <laughs> just, I... ha just have to take his wing off first. All I can also say is um, I think I'm a little sceptical about the February 29th release date because th if it does come out this on February 29th, this will be the only Final Fantasy I can recall, mainline Final Fantasy I can call, that had no delays whatsoever. And that doesn't happen with Final Fantasy. I mean, it's been... It would have been, like, what, nearly four years? 
Yeah, if you don't count the inter- so, and if you don't, if you don't not counting like the time between Intergrade coming out, um, which is the Yuffie DLC for. So, I mean, yeah, I can see it. I can see it happening. Yeah, no, I can see yeah. it happening. What I, I don't mean a significant delay. I mean like they might. Because what happened with Final Fantasy VII Remake was they were saying for ages, March 2020, and it was coming up to March. And in, like, last few weeks of February, they're saying, actually, we need to leave, delay this to, like, the middle of April. So I think what I'm saying is I wouldn't be surprised if we got, like, a two- or three-week delay. Maybe four weeks. Um, after, uh, but that's the most I can see it being delayed. This game looks like it's pretty much done. Yeah. I, I reckon we're going to get a new... Uh, if, if we get the news in January... Seven Rebirth has gone gold, then I'm confident on the release date. But even then, I'm going to be like, I'm not going to believe this release date until I get the news saying it's been dispatched. Yeah. Um, but how hype are you guys for Seven Rebirth? Very. Extremely. <laughs> yeah, this is my most hyped game of 2024 so far. I'm dead excited to see what they'll do with uh, this. And I, say it's, I say it's a Persona 3 for me. So, with that being said, um, how do you guys feel about the state of play? I'll start with you, Elliot. I gotta be honest, better than the direct. Um, Reese. Yeah, same. Uh, the, the, I had no expectations going in, and they just smashed everything. I had low expectations, given what they were saying beforehand. I thought, a lot of people were predicting 7 Rebirth, but I thought, mm, I'm not sure, I think that's Game Awards. But they made the right decision but they made uh, but they did get it i'm i'm actually interested because i thought stellar blade was going to get the highlight here i, wonder I was what- thinking i was thinking that would at least show up because i heard like there was a bit of news surrounding it before the showcase yeah, that, yeah. that's weird that one's gone very quiet i mean what i, I wonder what's happened with that one um I still kind of think it'll make next year. Yeah, I think it'll make next year, but I'm just I'm I'm very surprised that no one's formally said it. Um, yeah, they're probably taking more time to improve the jiggle physics. Yeah, I'm fine with them <laughs> taking the time, but I just want to say, by the way, it's not making 2023; it's making 2024, like we all know has happened, but no one's actually said it. Yeah. Um, I like to know Reese did a joke, and Calvin just took it seriously. <laughs> Yeah, but I, cause I, because I, I actually believe that might be something they actually might be doing. Um, that being said, the one thing it didn't do for me is something that I found I find very interesting, which is it's not highlighted what's it's not highlighted too much of what's next for Sony. Mm. Like, what's the next for after Hell Divers Two? They haven't got another big first party game coming out, and with um and and with Final Fantasy Rebirth, they haven't even got another third party exclusive. So, I'm uh, I'll be interested to see will they have. So I think they'll have another state of play early in next year where they'll highlight what's the next big thing for for PlayStation owners. Yeah. Um, but I'm I mean that being said, this thing did what they wanted it to do because no one's talking now about the fact that PlayStation Plus increased its price significantly. They're talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Spider-Man 2. So Yeah, just a great way to deflect heat off them. Yeah, but PlayStation does this a lot. They have a state of play to throw the heat off them. No one was talking about... When Final Fantasy VII Integrade was a thing, no one was talking about the fact they just closed Japan Studios at the time. So, I mean, um, I will be interested to see where we're going with Sony, but... This was a really good state of play, actually. They, I think they kind of they had a bad start, but they fixed it towards the end. Yeah. Um. So that's it for professional and professional. Um. It. It's been a, it's been very good fun talking to you guys about these last two presentations. Um. We'll probably we're back with Anime Amigos in a couple of weeks to do our seasonal roundup. Woo. We're working on a couple more extra formats going forwards for professional and professionals to get some more of these out i have i have kept i have been saying for a good while we should talk about the games we're reviewing on these yeah yeah but um we are gonna uh do like i would like to do one of these on sea of stars if i'm honest yeah well you might well we might get round to that one down the line but there's also another thing we i think the next one of these where we're talking about a presentation 
will be the Game Awards. Um, but we're also going to be uh, uh, giving our thoughts on nominations when that comes out. out. Oh, boy, it's the one I stress about the most. Well, we're not going to do predictions this time because predictions, I think, for the Game Awards, every time we do it, we don't get nail anything. I think the best we ever did was Sonic Frontiers and Final Fantasy Sixteen being in it. But um, I would, I do like talking about the nominations of the Game Awards because it, it, it doesn't... It interests me to see how the vote, how the judges voted in those, but yeah. there's um a good thing coming. But there's a couple of uh, good things coming up. Like we're working on potentially creating sort of a list of our favourite games in a certain category, our favourite characters in certain games. But I'm looking forward to cont- to what's coming up. It looks like we've got a great year, and when we get to doing our own awards in January. We're going to have a really hard time narrowing it down to five games for our Game of the Year nominations. Yeah, I really well. There's some I would really like to stay, but I'm worried they're going to get kicked out. Yeah, same with me. Like, uh, there's a bunch of games where I think, like, uh, there's a bunch like, of Like, guys, please don't make games so good that Mass Detective Archives is kicked out, at the very least. And um, I, I'm at that point where I'm going, oh, God, please, please don't give me, let, let me kick this one out because I really like it. And then I'm thinking, I'm the only one who's going to play Baldur's Gate, and I'm not going to be too probably not going to be too complimentary of it. So I will. So because that... because he doesn't understand how D and D works. No, I do understand how D and D works. I'm just not very good at it, and uh, I'm thinking of turning down the difficulty to improve that. Uh, so we'll see you probably. Uh, we'll see, we'll see you relatively soon. We're going to see you in a couple of weeks actually for Anime Amigos. So, but until then, yep. goodbye, goodbye everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Run while you still can.